So there's our first law. Kind of, I, I like this form because it's getting close. We don't know the mass. So let's do everything on a per unit mass basis. I'm asked to solve for this, and I'm asked to solve for that. That's my question for part A and question for part B. Do I stand a chance of being able to evaluate U2 minus U1? Starts at 500, ends at 300. Maybe I would say, okay, I'm going to use a model that it's the C sub V times T2 minus T1, true or false? Okay, what do we got for true or false? All right, I'm going to pause and I'm going to say is this equation right here. Is that A, is that true, or B, is that false? I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Uh, okay, it's starting to collect your responses now. So A, it's true, or B, it's false. Everybody in? Show the results. Can't be both true or false, right? It's got to be one or the other. Okay. Uh, why would somebody call this false? The volume's not constant. You know, I put stuff out there on the Internet, and uh, one person, you know, he doesn't know how to teach thermodynamics because he uses C sub V wherever, even if it's not a constant volume process. Common misconception, isn't it? Can I use the property specific heat constant volume to describe a change in a property for a substance that's undergoing a process that is not constant volume? Yes, yes you can. <laughs> that's one of those things out of chapter three. So uh, which answer is correct here? It's a little bit challenging when less than half get it true. But uh, we have to learn from our mistakes, and then we just press forward. Okay, so um, this is correct. Okay, a little review for an ideal gas, U is a function of T only. True? True. The definition of C sub V for an ideal gas, for a real gas, for any substance, liquid, solid state, any substance is defined as, that's usually the mathematician's three strokes there for an equal sign, is defined as the partial derivative of U with respect to T holding V constant. True or false? True. True. It's true. Okay, so now if, if U is a function of T only, that partial derivative turns into an ordinary derivative. True? Mathematically? So C sub V for an ideal gas is equal to just the ordinary derivative. If I want to get a change in U, it's just C sub V times change in T for an ideal gas mixture. And that's what we just wrote right here. I need to change in U, C sub V times change in T. True? All right. Now, sometimes somebody says, what happens if this is a function of temperature? Then put the average in here. So if I might want to do an average, you know, because I want to not have to integrate C sub V over the temperature range that it's changing. Otherwise, if you want to go U2 minus U1, it's the integral of the temperature dependent C sub V. You have to get that function uh, times dt. But a lot of times, just pull it out and use the average value, and so it's C sub V average over that temperature range, T2 minus T1. Okay? Make sense? All right. Little diversion there. Let's get us back on track.